When the pandemic hit in March of 2020, we were scared. New Orleans was the hot spot outside of New York City. So when we laid off our line cooks and our servers, Isaac said to them, come back every day, we'll eat family meal together just so we can check on one another and, and make sure you're fed. I told my line cooks, I said, hey look, you need a meal. We fix the meals uh, twice a day, every day. Come get a meal, come hang out. Tell us what you're, have a brew on us and uh, you know, then we'll, get, we'll hire you, rehire you as soon as we get back to it. Well, that didn't happen. And sure enough, we could call Chef, my roommate, he got laid off, but they're not feeding him. I'm like, okay, instead of 10 family meals, I'll make 12. Within five days, mom started reaching out to me and saying their cupboards were bare. Five days in America, that people were food insecure in five days. And the first mom said to me, you can feed my kids, but don't feed me. And I lost it. I still cry, as you could tell. Like, it, I'm a mom. And I don't know what it feels like to not be able to feed my kids. I've never been there. But she was. And so that really kind of opened the floodgates because there was no way that me and Isaac were, were gonna like not feed children. It just wasn't gonna happen. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I, it was just kind of my response. I'm like, you're hungry? F that. And it pissed me off. It pissed me off because what is it? This, this is America, right? This is the greatest country on the earth and you're hungry? That's not right. That's not right whatsoever. Within just a matter of days, we had 500 people a day here at the meadery. It, they were wrapping around the block to get family meal. Isaac and I were sitting down and he said, well, I guess we need to bring family meal back. And I was telling my girlfriends and they were like, okay, but you gotta be legit now. You need to start a nonprofit. Cause we were pirates before. It was renegade, it was COVID. So we just, we did it whatever way we could do it. And so we started our nonprofit, Tube's Family Meal. And I said to him, look, this is different. Last time was really all about, we'll do whatever we can. We're gonna feed them whatever we can. These are kids. We gotta get them nutritious meals that they will eat. At first, again, it was just an angry reaction, a knee jerk reaction. The kids are hungry. The kids are hungry. No, 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 no. Let's throw the crawfish pots on right now. And like, I mean, it's like, wait, wait. We don't, we don't have the services to get these food just yet. Hold up. And so I'm, I wanted to go. I wanted to start cooking. And so we, then we started to make a plan. Luckily, my staff, my friends, and my wife are all better at making plans than I am at cooking. And so that was the reaction. It's like, okay, we gotta start family meal up again. We gotta get this thing going, but we have to be a lot more organized this time. Basically the way that it works is a massive operation. At 10 o'clock in the morning, um, my GM sends out a mass text to the delivery drivers just reminding them it's delivery day. And if they can come, they come, and they don't have to respond to the text. They just show up at three o'clock when delivery happens, and then we remind them again about two o'clock. Throughout the days of the week, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, excuse me, for Tuesday, we've been cooking the meals, getting them delivered, all of those things. And then we have, we've got some great teenagers that are getting their service hours in for the summer. They're amazing. And they help us build the grocery bags during the day. So on that Tuesday. And then um, we've kept all the foods cold that we need to that aren't shelf stable. And then as we get closer to three o'clock, we have built almost every bag. We got really lucky and Inland Seafood donated a refrigerated truck to us, which we now have on the side of the building. We load the refrigerated truck with all of the bags. And then whenever um, we send out a text message to the families, letting them know that, don't forget today's delivery day. And then at three o'clock, delivery drivers start lining up to come pick up their routes. So I say, how you doing? And it's been people that I've gotten to know now, they're, they're coming multiple times. How you doing? Where would you like to go in the city? All right, here's your route. They have it all listed by mom, the amount of children in the, in the household, her address and her phone number. So then they will go by each stop all the way down. We get them the bags. The children can help them to their car if they need it. And then they head on their route. What they do is they bring the food to the porch, they ring the bell, and then they get back in their car and they send mom a text message so there's no contact with the children or the families. And then they go to the next stop. We got everything out in 35 minutes yesterday. That was 3,186 meals to 200 families and 533 food insecure children yesterday, their delivery went out in 30 minutes. And I'm damn proud of that. Right now, we need donations. Right now, we need donations of food. We need donations of money. Uh, we have the people, fortunately. We don't need volunteers right now. Uh, right now, but we don't know what's gonna happen next week. We're putting out close to 6,500 meals a week. 
and that's costing us, depending if we can get some vegetable or protein um, donations, it, it's costing us between twelve to $15,000 a week. And so I'm having to fundraise that every week. We do need donations right now. We won't be able to do this without it. That's the simple truth.